Okay, so uh, we are continue with uh, considering uh, it uh, integral, and we will uh, see uh, to, uh, to, uh, today an uh, it uh, formula, and we will prove it. But first, uh, let us uh, start from uh, simple properties of it uh, integral. And you will see that they are familiar uh, to you. Uh, and they are uh, similar to properties of uh, Riemann uh, CLTS integrals. So uh, let's write some properties. So I recall that on the previous lecture, we defined such an integral of uh, some random function with respect to a uh, Brownian motion. Yes, we defined it. And uh, uh, I recall that our uh, process H uh, is uh, progressively measurable. Uh, with respect to sigma phi, uh, to filtration Ft that uh, generated by uh, Brownian motion. So I write here, we consider it specific uh, filtration here. Uh, Instantly, this uh, property uh, means uh, that uh, if I consider uh, some um, value of the process time uh, t, then it will be uh, is ft measurable. So we uh, uh, so that this property for progressively measurable uh, processes holds. So uh, now uh, let's discuss some properties and uh, first uh, two are uh, very familiar to you from uh, such integral of uh, for non-random functions. So let uh, I consider two processes H1 and H2. They are pro progressively measurable. Uh, and uh, we should assume as in uh, uh, this integral, progressively uh, uh, measurable. And uh, recall that, that, that I need to assume that uh, norms of H1 and H2 to uh, are finite. So uh, less than infinity and H2 less than infinity. Now I will recall for you, we defined this uh, norm on the previous lecture and this is equal to expectation of uh, square, if I consider on the interval from zero to T. Uh, this is it uh, to the squared S T S. And here, let me put a square here. So uh, the, this norms should be finite in order to define this integral. So uh, if I, I have two uh, random processes, then the uh, integral from zero, from zero to t of sum of two processes, h2 from s, db from s, is equal to uh, sum of integrals. So uh, this is uh, very uh, easy to see. Oh, I'm sorry, v, v from s, d, d from s. Uh, so uh, 
how to prove this. Uh, so the proof is very similar to the proof of the of such property for Riemann still yes integral. So uh, I just give you some sketch of the proof. So uh, how we had defined these integrals, we uh, find some approximation with respect uh, uh, some approximation of these processes with uh, step uh, processes. I will uh, put, put here index n. So, uh, so the, the, this is a progressively measurable uh, step processes, uh, step process. And they convert to H one and H two and converges to H two as M converges to infinity. And here recall convergence in this norm. So yes. And for step function, this uh, uh, new property is uh, very easy to see. Yes, what we have we have uh, for integral uh, sums. If I consider uh, for step function, uh, let me write here. Let me specify this uh, right. So let h1 from n is equal to some, for example, psi 1 on the intervals ti, ti plus 1 i from 1 to uh, k1 and h2 n is equal to i from 1 to k2 and here another eta i for example and so here i can uh, choose uh, the partition of interval 0 t with the same uh, points t i and then the uh, integrals from zero to t for uh, this uh, step function we know that uh, from s d b from s this is just a uh, sum from i to one to, uh, from one to uh, k. Oh, I'm sorry, I should put here one k. So as I choose here the same subintervals. And sum is equal to xi i plus eta i and multiply it by increments of Brownian motion. So now we just use the linearity for sums. And uh, this is just uh, will be the integrals for uh, H1 and H2 Ti plus sum of eta i B Ti plus one minus B from Ti. Okay, so this is just a uh, sum of two. Uh, Integral. So this is property is uh, very easy and almost obvious. And now, uh, what we should do? We should pass to the, uh, get to the limit when h uh, when n converges to infinity. And here I will get the integral of some of two processes h1 and h2 and on the right hand side i will have sum of two integrals so this is easy uh, now the uh, next property uh, also that is similar to uh, deterministic inter interval and suppose that i have uh, two uh, moments uh, s and t and uh, as the property says, uh, so I assume that my process H satisfy all 
uh, properties that we need to define the integral. And then I can uh, find the integral on the uh, large interval as uh, sum of uh, integral on sub intervals. Yes, d b from s plus from s to t h. Oh, I'm sorry, let me write here another letter from for r h from r d b from r. So uh, the proof is uh, the same. We uh, need to take the uh, approximation uh, with step functions. Uh, I will write in this way. So, and h n, for example, is equal to sum again xi i indicator of ti ti plus one to some uh, number k and we rem uh, you can re remember that we proved that integral does not uh, depends on the uh, choice of this uh, functions so we can add uh, to this function uh, this point s so let me write the picture. So if I have two points S and T, and for example, I have approximation here, HN with uh, points T1, T2, T3, and here T is equal to TK, uh, T, K plus one, yes. So I can, Add to the to this. Uh, so I, I have such process, for example, it is a step process, and I can add this point S and consider the same process, but with steps on this uh, sub intervals. Yes. So I just add another uh, point in my partition. So I will write it here uh, from one to k. I, and I add uh, here one point s. So I will have uh, k plus one points in divisions here. And uh, I will write uh, c i biggest uh, prime. And here uh, t i prime ti plus one prime, uh, where uh, here you can just understand from the picture that uh, psi i bs prime, I choose in a such way so that I have equality here. So uh, using this uh, easy trick, we can see that the integral for uh, the for the, this step functions h and from s d b s is just equal to uh, I can consider sum from uh, here I consider those t i's uh, which are uh, less then s and so i choose such indexes and i write here c i prime and here d b from t i prime minus so b t i prime and uh the second sum so i just uh split uh, this integral to uh, two sums, yes. And here I should choose those t i's prime, which are greater, or uh, let me write here equal, here, yes. And the same I write here, minus. And now uh, 
this is the uh, integral of uh, uh, process on the interval uh, from zero to s. Yes, uh, d h r d b r. Uh, and the second sum is the integral from S to T for this step process as well. And now we need uh, get uh, to the limit when N converges to infinity. So these properties uh, proved uh, as in your calculus and they are similar, uh, just you need here to be uh, sure that uh, we have here convergence in L2 uh, and that's all. Uh, now the third property is uh, the property of the process. Uh, so uh, this is uh, what we have new for uh, eta inter, uh, integral. So let us consider this process. I will denote it by I from T. I will denote such integral from zero to T of the process H from S, D, B. So I can define such integrals for all T that are greater or equal than zero, yes? And now I consider this process with respect to T. And third property uh, says that this process i from uh, i uh, from t is a martingale. Uh, with respect to filtration that we defined earlier, so this is filtration of uh, Brownian motion. So uh, this property is uh, new and uh, let's prove it but the proof is uh, easy as well. So uh, what uh, should I prove here to prove that the, the, that the process is a martingale? So martingale property uh, says us that uh, for two moments of time S and T, if I take the conditional expectation of the process at time t, this condition on sigma algebra up to time s, this should be equal to a process at time s. So this is we should do uh, prove. I will write here question. So. Uh, uh, to see this, we just need to use uh, previous uh, property of the um, integral and write the integral on the interval from zero to t of the process. B from S is, uh, let me write here also another letter. Uh, R. F R F S. And I split this integral into two parts from zero to S, H R D B R F S plus uh, expectation zero from uh, now here from S to T h from r d v r with respect to f s. Uh, now we should uh, find this conditional expectation of the integrals. And uh, to do this, we again assume that we have a step function. So uh, if I prove it for step function, then you will have the same property for arbitrary uh, process just uh, getting the limit. So I assume that my process H is a step process. So this is XI on the 
intervals t i t i this one <coughs> right here are k one two k uh, so uh, and now I would like to find the conditional expectation of the uh, integral. So uh, uh, if I have uh, this uh, integral from zero to s, uh, then I have uh, h from r t r this will be a uh, sum uh, sum of uh, psi i and here i have increment of t i plus one minus b from t i and here i uh, take only uh, such indexes uh, that uh, here uh, t i plus one less or equal than s. Yes, let, let me draw the picture. So I uh, have uh, integral on interval from zero to s from such for some step function of uh, such kind. And I take only these uh, sub intervals. Yes. And uh, now, if I want to find uh, conditional expectation, I will write here conditional expectation of such integral. This is conditional expectation of such sum. And uh, what do we uh, know here? So, first, I can rewrite this as sum of conditional expectation of each summand here t i plus one minus v from t i with respect to sigma field f s. Uh, now I uh, know that uh, by assumption uh, psi i Function. Uh, we integrate the progressively measurable process. So uh, psi i should be f t i plus uh, h i t i measurable. Yes, we discussed this. And uh, also, what do we know for Brownian motion? So uh, since I uh, take those indexes that ti plus one less or equals than s, then also uh, for Brownian motion, ti is f uh, ti measurable. Yes, for this, for all these indexes. Let me write here, maybe for J. Uh, where J is J is such that T J plus one uh, less than S. Uh, so, and also we know that uh, our sigma, uh, field f s is a subset of sigma field f t for s less than t. So from these properties follows that uh, this uh, random variable is uh, measurable with respect to sigma field f s. So from this follows that psi i multiplied by increments of uh, Brownian motion is F S measure. So maybe I here should 
uh, you oh, okay, so this is true. And so uh, this conditional expectation just equal just uh, this uh, random variable. So I can continue here. So this was an explanation for my computation. So I have those T I that this was an S psi I and here T I plus one minus B from T I. And here you can recognize the integral from zero to S of the process B from S D B S. So uh, we have in our uh, here formula, first part is equal to just this integral. Now let us consider the integral from S to T and uh, find its conditional expectation with respect to FS. Uh, the second term, uh, the, the same we have, uh, I should find such conditional expectation with respect to sigma field fs. And again, uh, for step function, we assume that h is step function. So I take, I can write this integral as uh, some here psi i and increments of uh, Brownian motion. But now, uh, I take only those indexes i for which uh, t i plus one is greater than or equal to s. Oh. Okay, so uh, and uh, now what uh, do we have? Uh, we know that uh, if I will uh, write the conditional expectation of th from r, so this is just a uh, sum of conditional expectations. I uh, with respect to sigma field uh, S. Uh, now, uh, what do I know? I know that uh, uh, this part is independent of the sigma field, but uh, now that psi I are. Uh, mm, uh, also uh, measurable, uh, but I do not know if psi i is measurable with, with respect to uh, sigma field fs. So what should I do? Uh, recall that we have a tower property for conditional expectation. And uh, now the indexes uh, here, uh, I such that uh, let me take here index of such way that ti is ti is greater than s. And now uh, what uh, can I do? I will take first expectation with respect to uh, larger sigma field. And then I will take the expectation with, with this smaller sigma field. So I write here in such way Ti plus one. This is just a, a tower property of conditional expectation, Fti. And then I take again conditional expectation with respect to uh, time s. Okay, so uh, now from uh, this, so here 
the ball that f s is smaller than f t i in this sum. So now here I can use the, the, that uh, xi i is uh, measurable with respect to uh, f t. So this is measurable. And this part is independent. Independent of uh, with respect to f t. Okay, and now I can uh, calculate this uh, conditional expectation very easy. I put me uh, measurable part inside of expectation, and then expectation of independent part is equal just uh, unconditional expectation, and expectation of Brownian motion is equal to zero. So we have here nothing else than zero. This is zero. So uh, we proved in our uh, formula. So we have that conditional expectation of integral R, D, R with respect to sigma field Fs is equal just integral from zero to S, H from R, D, B. So this means that, that the integral is a martingale. So this is a very important property and we will use it uh, later in our lecture course. Okay, so uh, this is the first part of lectures. We consider some pro uh, properties of the integral. And now uh, let's uh, see uh, what we can uh, say also about this kind in of integrals. But first, uh, before to start uh, the uh, discussion of eta formula, recall what we have done in the previous lecture. In the pre uh, previous lecture, we considered integral of Brownian motion with respect to itself. And we saw that, that this is equal to one over two square of Brownian motion minus one over two multiplied by t. So, and this is, uh, 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 this formula is uh, not as you, uh, similar to uh, that you are know from your calculus uh, course for uh, deterministic functions, because we know for deterministic function, if you consider integral of some function with respect to itself, you will have just a uh, first part of uh, this formula. Yes. Uh, we assume that f from zero is equal to zero. So uh, now we will try to generalize uh, this uh, property and we will see that uh, we will have an additional terms uh, for uh, eta integral if you compare it with uh, known formula from the a calculus. So uh, let's uh, formulate the theorem and then we will discuss how we can prove it. Theorem. So uh, what I will consider? I will consider some function f uh, that is uh, twice continuously differentiable on the real line. So this is just some function. I will write that this is deterministic function. And now I uh, will consider the uh, function from uh, Brownian motion. So this is uh, also a continuous function. And we uh, would like to obtain the 
uh, formula for this. Uh, uh, we, will, we would like to find uh, different, uh, the first differential for this uh, function f. So uh, let me uh, recall you that for, okay, let me write here precise. So we have that for such process, we can write uh, in this way. So I will have here F prime from B from S, D, B from S. Here you can recognize the part that you have uh, from deterministic calculus, but in the case of Brownian motion, we have additional term here, one over two, and integral from zero to t, f two prime from b from s, and here just ds. So uh, the first two term, you can uh, recognize that this is uh, just definition of uh, if uh, you have not a Brownian motion, but deterministic function, uh, this just uh, a well known uh, formula for integration. But now we have additional uh, term here with the second uh, derivative. And before to prove, let us discuss this. Uh, formula, why uh, we can expect uh, to have this additional term. Uh, on, and also I didn't say that uh, this is uh, known that as eta formula, eta formula. Uh, so uh, how we can expect uh, this uh, formula if, we know some properties of Brownian motion. So uh, using uh, uh, Taylor expansion, uh, what uh, first I can uh, consider uh, such in increment of uh, values of functions f at point b from t and f from zero as uh, uh, such sum for points of partitions. Uh, again, I have some partition assumed and I can write it in this way. Yes, so this is the same where I take, for example, such partition, tn is equal to n, and here i from one to n minus one. Okay, and now uh, if I apply, um, uh, a Taylor formula for these increments, what should we uh, have here? N, plus N minus one. Uh, I know that function F is uh, differentiable. So I take first derivative at this point and multiply it by increment of values. So I will have here ti plus one minus b from ti. Uh, so the, 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 this is the first term of uh, Taylor expansion. And the second, I will write only two. Uh, and minus one, f to prime from b ti here b from ti plus one minus b from ti to the square and I missed one over two. And I have some remaining term uh, here. Uh, I will write here. So uh, what we should expect in the limit. So here uh, in the first term, you can recognize the uh, integral sum for uh, eta integral. So we uh, can expect that this will converge to integral of 
this GBS. So we know this. Uh, what is uh, what can we say about the second term? For for the second term, uh, we can note uh, that this increment T i plus one minus B from T i. Uh, we know it has a Gaussian distribution with uh, mean zero and variance T i plus one minus T i. So for a small uh, intervals uh, of partition, uh, we can uh, expect expect that this value in the square t1 to, to the square almost as uh, ti plus one minus ti. So I write here so such an uh, informal uh, signs. So we expect that for small uh, t's that this uh, value is uh, like the increment of t i plus one minus t i. So if uh, we uh, know such intuition, we will expect that this is almost uh, t i plus one minus t i. So all the this sum will converge to all the sum. Uh, we expect that this converges to one over two integral from zero to t to prime ds. And here just ds because this is uh, integral sum for Riemann or integral. And uh, this term, uh, we uh, should prove that, that, that this term is tends to zero for small uh, partitions. Yes. So this is the intuition uh, why we can expect such a form. And now you can see why we have additional uh, term here. Because uh, if you compare it with uh, just uh, Riemann still yes integral you had for a function with bounded uh, variation uh, this term uh, also converges to zero but in case of a Brownian motion we know that uh, Brownian motion has uh, a non-zero quadratic va variation so this uh, leads to additional term in the eta integral. So uh, we see from here that, that we need to prove uh, uh, two parts of the uh, of such convergence. First, we need to prove uh, this part that uh, integral sums with respect to square of interval uh, increments converges to such integral. And the second part that uh, remaining terms as well tends to zero. So let's uh, start our proof uh, in details of the theorem. And the first step, as I said, we will prove uh, such Uh, such a statement. So uh, at first I uh, suppose that I have some uh, continuous fu uh, function g, I will denote it. So this is continuous function. And I have the such uh, sums that g from b from ti multiplied by square of increments of Brownian motion to the square. Uh, this converge to the integral from zero to t, uh, g from b from s, ds, uh, where uh, this convergence uh, uh, holds uh, when the 
mesh of partition uh, delta n converges to zero. Uh, I recall that uh, delta n is a partition here, t1 less than t2 less than so on. tn is equal to t, and mesh of partition we denote as a maximum of length of the intervals in partition phi from uh, n minus one. So uh, let's prove this statement. Uh, let's prove it. And uh, to prove it, uh, uh, what should I do? I know that uh, such uh, sums uh, will converge to this. Uh, so first I will approximate such uh, integral. So as I know, such integral, uh, this is just Riemann integral and we can approximate is with Riemann uh, sums uh, from one uh, g from b at t i and here i write t i plus one minus t i so i know this that oh, i'm sorry not equal this is linked and converges to infinity limit of such sums uh, so uh, i will prove the statement if I prove that, so we need to prove uh, that uh, I will have uh, such uh, L2 convergence, L2 lint of uh, this kind. So I will take what do we have in the statement of uh, theorem of the of the statement i will have here to the square uh, minus i will uh, subscribe such integral sum and i will put it together so here if i put it together i just add this term here and uh, i need to show that this uh, we have such limit is equal to zero so this is we need to prove we need to prove and uh, uh, how we can uh, do this uh, first i assume uh, that uh, uh, i assume uh, that uh, function g is bounded is bounded Then I can approximate any functions, uh, any function g by a bounded uh, uh, function. So uh, under such assumption, uh, what uh, we should do here? So uh, limit in square means uh, says that we need to prove that the expectation of a square of such sums p from ti and this ti plus one minus b from ti to the square minus ti plus one minus ti uh, to the sum uh, to the square is converges to zero. Uh, now I will uh, write this expression so we know that we can write this square of sum as sum with respect to two indexes with respect to i from zero to n minus one and uh, j with respect uh, from zero to n minus one. And here I have uh, this uh, the same value just uh, 
here for i's and for j, t j, and the same for this uh, brackets b t i plus y minus b from b t i to the square minus t i plus one t i and multiply by the same bracket with respect to j minus b from t i to the square uh, j I, i'm sorry t j plus one minus t j okay so uh, now i put the expectation into this uh, sums and uh, also, uh, let's consider uh, first uh, if I not equal to J, what uh, I have here. So let's consider such case. Uh, let me take, for example, I less than J. Yes. And then consider this expectation here for such a uh, term. Uh, let me maybe I will not rewrite it because it's a huge uh, formula here, but let us discuss uh, what do we know. If uh, i less than j, uh, then for such indexes we have that t uh, i less than t j and also t i plus one less than t j plus one. Yes, and uh, now. I uh, know that uh, what do I know that uh, I will take the conditional expectation of this uh, term. So if I take uh, conditional expectation of all these values bti btj and so on i will not rewrite it here indexes with i's and here oh, without and here indexes with respect to j i will take the expectation the conditional expectation with respect to f t uh, yield. Uh, now, since, uh, since the indexes uh, we choose such that uh, this holds, then uh, there terms here we can uh, use measurability. Yes, and put the measurable terms inside of conditional expectation. Uh, Ti, uh, G from B, T, J, and uh, here also as well, B, T, I plus one minus B from T, I to the square, this is measurable part plus one minus ti. And what do we have under the conditional expectation? I will write here, conditional expectation of b from ti plus one minus b from ti to the square, or oh, I'm sorry, tj to the square minus tj plus one minus tj. So how we can find this uh, conditional expectation? Uh, recall that here, recall that, that on the uh, previous lecture, we proved that uh, B from T to the square minus T is a martingale. So uh, what this means uh, that Conditional expectation of uh, B squared to, for example, for T minus T 
uh, under condition of f, for example, s is equal to b square of s minus s. Yes, uh, now uh, uh, since b uh, from s is measurable with respect to sigma field, I will uh, rewrite it. I just uh, subscribe that this uh, terms from left and uh, right sides. And I write that we have such property uh, t minus s with respect to f, s is equal to zero. So I have uh, that uh, such is equal to zero. And now I need to uh, see what do we have here. Uh, and if I consider uh, square b t plus uh, minus b from s to the square minus t minus s f s. This is equal. So there are uh, uh, what we I have here. Mm -hmm. This is equal. Just a moment. Mm -hmm. Uh, expectation uh, b square from t uh, minus 2b uh, from t b from s plus b square from s uh, minus t minus s f s and or uh, maybe i did not i do not need this part so now uh, I use the uh, just this property. So I'm sorry, I do not need this. I just need to use this part. And I apply it to this uh, line. So B square from T minus T with respect to sigma field Fs. This is just B square from S uh, minus S. So I uh, take this part. Uh, then uh, what do I have here? Uh, plus uh, minus two, two conditional expectation, uh, B from T and B from S with respect to F S uh, plus B square from S plus S. Yes, I just take this. And I use the property that uh, B square from S is measurable with respect to Fs. Uh, so what do I have here now? I take this 2B square from S and minus two. Uh, I know that Bs is uh, measurable and Brownian motion is a martingale, so conditional expectation of Brownian motion Bt with respect to Bs uh, to sigma field Fs gives us also B from S. So this is just zero as well. So we proved that uh, this conditional expectation is equal to zero. And let me come back here. So what uh, I proved here that uh, this is uh, zero. So uh, in my sum, uh, all terms with uh, different indexes has zero expectation. So here in this uh, term, I have only uh, uh, summons with equal indexes in this uh, square. So we continue. Continue. Uh, let me denote, please denote in your copy books this expectation that this value expectation of uh, sum of square of sum by letter 
S, for example. And now this S just equals sum I from uh, zero to N minus one. Expectation of, we have a square B from TI because we have equal indexes. And here we have B TI plus one minus B from TI to the square minus TI plus one minus TI. And this is also to the square. Uh, so now I can bound, I assume that uh, G is bounded function. So I uh, assume that uh, G is bounded with uh, some uh, a constant m. So I will uh, write here, here expectation m square and here. I will consider uh, this expectation of these brackets to the uh, square. So here I will have the uh, force uh, moments b from ti to the force moment and plus uh, ti plus one minus ti to the uh, square. And the term with uh, minus, I will just uh, miss here because I have inequality, yes. Uh, so uh, now we can uh, calculate the expectation. You know that expectation of uh, Brownian motion is equal to uh, three times Ti minus one minus Ti to the uh, square, because this is, this is the first moment of Gaussian random variables uh, with respect, uh, with variance Ti plus one minus Ti. So this is just formula for force moment. And here Ti plus one minus Ti to the square. So we have here equal terms here. So this, this is just equal M square. And I can write also inequality. I will, uh, uh, for one brackets in this uh, sum, I will take maximum with respect to I and minus one from Ti plus one minus Ti. And here just sum Ti plus one minus Ti. We already uh, did su 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 such uh, uh, estimation before in the previous lecture. So uh, this, what we have here, we have some constant uh, three, uh, this sum is equal to uh, T because we have integral from zero to T. And here I have the mesh of distribution of uh, partition. So th this tends to zero as a uh, mesh of partition tends to uh, zero. So we have proved uh, that, uh, let's uh, see what we have proved. We proved that such uh, integral, uh, that such sums converges to such an integral. So uh, now we can prove the eta formula. This is not uh, hard now. Uh, so uh, as I said, we consider uh, some partition. Yes, let me write it again. Uh, T0, zero, zero. T0 zero less than T1 and so on. Tn is equal to T. And uh, I will consider, uh, so what do we need to prove now? Now we need to uh, prove for that the remaining terms, uh, term we will converge to uh, zero. 
So I will write it. Uh, So uh, recall that, that uh, what we considered, we considered B from uh, uh, a function F from B of T minus B from uh, F from zero. And we write it as such sum F uh, from B from T I. This is using a uh, Taylor formula. Ti from one to uh, n minus one uh, plus. I can uh, write the term uh, here. I will write uh, the second term using such representation that we can take some uh, point, for example, uh, psi. Uh, B from Ti plus one minus B from Ti to, to the, the, the square where Psi I is between uh, points B from Ti plus one and B from Ti. Yes, yeah, so this is just such uh, um, Taylor expansion uh, with these two terms. Uh, from this, uh, we can estimate. So uh, now I will consider Let me uh, take for uh, to understand what uh, we will do now. I will consider only one uh, summand in this sum. So, for uh, uh, for example, for uh, two points x and y, uh, let me write it in some uh, interval. Uh, we can write the upper bound uh, for x y minus x minus one over two f prime from x y min minus x uh, to the square. I can estimate the uh, uh, remaining term as uh, here, if I will add and, and subscribe uh, the term of uh, such kind here, yes, I will uh, write here y minus x to the square. And here I will just take supremum of f to prime from x minus f to prime from y, where uh, x and y from this. Uh, interval. Yes, so we can uh, estimate uh, such, we can write such estimation for remaining term of uh, Taylor expansion. Uh, so I will use this uh, upper bound now and uh, also let us denote Uh, if I take uh, x and y uh, close enough to one another, so I will take x and y such that they are close enough, so they are less than tilde, and they also from the some interval compact. I will denote by a uh, letter omega from uh, this uh, delta and the length of interval m here. The supremum uh, when x and y in the interval from minus m, m, and they are on the distance less than delta. 
of f prime to prime x minus f to prime from y. So in this notation, uh, what do we, uh, how we can estimate uh, the remaining term in our uh, considered uh, sum? Uh, using such notation, we can write that, I recall that I considered sum from zero to n minus one, f from b from ti plus one minus f from uh, b from ti. So this is one part uh, minus I considered uh, the part with first derivative ti plus one b from ti plus one minus b from ti uh, minus the second part in the Taylor expansion with two derivative at point ti b from ti plus one minus b from ti to the square. And this uh, is uh, less or equal. Uh, so what do I have here? I have a uh, square of increments. So I write here square of in increments b from ti plus one minus b from ti to the square i from zero to n minus one. And here I would like to write this omega, but uh, what kind of uh, delta and m uh, should I take? Delta, I will write here b and m from b, uh, where, so uh, delta is, says how two points are close one to another. So I should take, uh, delta b is the increment of these points and I will take maximum uh, between them. So I take the uh, distance between two points in this function, yes? And I take the, ma the maximum value. And this one. And here m b, uh, the uh, constant m, uh, says in what interval uh, these uh, points are. So uh, they are in the interval of B from S here. So they are not uh, larger than maximum of Brownian motion on this interval. Okay, so uh, I have such an upper bound. And uh, what do I know about it? I know, uh, so we know, uh, since uh, B is continuous, we can say that this, uh, then it is, It is uh, uniformly continuous. On the interval uh, zero t. And then uh, what do I have here? I have the uh, supremum of uh, uh, increments of continuous functions. So uh, we need that f to prime also is uniformly, uniformly continuous on the interval such minus b m b. So uh, the, this supremum Supremum where f, uh, I just will write 
what uh, we need. Uh, this will converge to zero, yes, because we know that for uh, uh, will converge to zero, and we need to specify when mesh of partition tends to zero, yes. Why is it so? So when mesh of partition tends to zero, we know that uh, B is uniformly continuous. So uh, this delta B will converge to zero as well. And uh, since B to prime of B is also uniformly continuous, then such supremum will converge to zero as well. So this is just the property of continuity. So here, what uh, we proved? We proved that, that this uh, omega converges to zero. Uh, this sum, you can recognize here, uh, quadratic variance of Brownian motion. And we proved that uh, it tends to uh, T, but the most important that it is uh, bounded. So we have estimation that this converges to zero. And what do we have in the right hand side on the left hand side? The first uh, term is just, you can see here, this is B F from P from T minus F from zero. Yes, this is just such sum. Uh, this uh, sum we proved uh, that this converges to just by definition to eta integral f prime from b from s dbs and this uh, converges to as we proved on the first part this converges to one over two integral from f to prime from b from s ds yes so uh this uh the end of the proof of eta formula because what we proved we proved that uh the the claim was the statement of the theorem that b from t this is first uh part is equal and here we have two integrals b from s dbs plus one over two zero to t f prime b from s ds so this ends the uh, 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 proof of the eta formula okay so uh today uh there proof was not very easy itself because we need to uh, do a lot of computations but now we have a very uh, useful formula and we will uh, use it now in uh, our further investigations and uh, also we have seen that the integral is a uh, Martingale, yes, now we can uh, uh, calculate easily its uh, expectation and conditional expectation. So this is uh, good for us too. Uh, so that's it for today's lecture. And if you have uh, some questions, you can ask.